Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of long band names, looking at the group And So I Watch You From Afar. We're going to be looking at the song Set Guitars to Kill off of their self-titled album. And <laughs> that's just such a wild song title. <laughs> I don't even know it's uh, obviously, you know, it's making, uh, it's taking jabs from like, uh, you know, set phasers to stun that you would hear in like Star Trek or something, but about their instruments. I don't know. Let's dive into it, see what's going on with, and so I watch you from afar. But stomping's getting out of sync. Almost sounds like there's a delay now between the two sides. Very fuzzy sound, just a massive tone overall. A massive bass tone as well. Really tight snare rolls there. So the drums had begun to emphasize uh, this like four on the floor rhythm just prior to this and now the guitars utilize that as a transition into this section. Really smart writing. Yep, and taking that first rhythm from where we were but evolving it into the syncopated one. All right, that was kind of fun. This is the same rhythm we had, but very different notes. And of course, over here on the left, we have the, uh, was that tremolo picking, I think it was? Interesting use of dissonance here.
Yeah, just a massive sound to end this entire instrumental on. Set guitars to kill. Makes sense. Now, in this retrospect, the guitars are like super fuzzy in a way that almost feels like a phaser beam to me. I don't know if that's really what they're going for on that, but it works for the way that I approach the song and understanding it. But it's definitely a guitar-oriented track. The drums are there. They have some really neat ideas. They have some really tight drum fills. Um, and there at the end, that entire build-up with that snare roll, I don't think could have been possible without the snare roll. The, the guitars, I don't think, would have had the energy to uh, bring that up to the head that it needed to. But aside from that, the drums are very, very functional. They give us a, a, a rhythm, they give us a groove, obviously, but a lot of it is very... Uh, Stereotypical, I suppose, for just a little bit more of a, a groovier, upbeat kind of rock style. There isn't really a lot that the drums are bringing to the table melodically or structurally or even really transitionally. It really is there to be the heartbeat behind everything else. It's a very foundational aspect of the track, even though there are some times where the drums do get to shine a bit. And so the song is very guitar-centric. Set Guitars to Kill, at least to me, shows, hey, this is going to be our guitar work at our peak. This is going to be the most killer stuff you've heard from the drum or from the guitars, uh, the electric and the bass, even though I think the bass could have been present a little bit more. They also sort of took a bit more of a functional role. But I like to think of the bass in the group of guitars. When you say, you know, we're, this is the guitars. Yeah, the bass guitar is in there. But maybe not everybody sees it that way. And so the song is very electric guitar focused. Though, much like the drums, the bass does get to uh, showcase themselves a little bit. Um, the first thing, just immediately. The tone. These guitars, the bass included, are massive. They're very large, very fuzzy, lots of distortion and compression on them. Um, but they still have a way of, of narrowing it down. I don't know if it's a secondary uh, you know, set of settings that they have on their pedals and stuff that uh, gives them this, this more narrow sound that allows them to cut through a little bit and takes up a lot less space. But we do have a couple of quieter sections in here. Uh, not really quieter, just smaller sections where the guitars kind of lose a lot of that wide body that they get from the, the compression and kind of narrow it up a little bit, uh, allowing them to have this thinner sound. And it gives some contrast. Uh, to the song pacing. We're going to talk about some of that later, how the structure all works. But what I, I just want to focus on here is that a majority of this song, not all of it, but a majority has this really beefy guitar tone. It's the first thing I picked up on. The bass is sort of snuck in under a lot of it at the beginning. The bass becomes a little bit more prominent about a minute in, and I really got a good listen to it. And it, too, has a very similar production to it, where it's just this massive sound. And it makes sense, because you have your drums keeping your rhythmic foundation, you have your bass keeping your rhythmic and har harmonic foundation, and then you have your guitars, and that's it. That's the whole song. So yeah, these instruments are going to need to be large to fill all of this space. It is, as I mentioned, pretty much the first thing I heard here, and yeah, it's uh, it's it's wild, it's a big tone, but as I said, it makes sense. It's probably what I would have done as well, simply because you need to keep that energy up, and a lot of that's going to be derived from filling the space. Now, the next thing I noticed was composition. There's really no melody in here 
at all, which is a bit of a shame. We did have a little bit of melody, I think it was like three and a half or four minutes in, the guitars began to take on a little bit of a solo-esque section, but aside from that rare moment, a lot of everything else was riffs. It was a one to two bar cyclical idea repeated over and over and over. The main punctuating elements came from sometimes an element that we would get at the end of the fourth repetition from the guitars, but often and frequently something we would get from the drums, a way to break up the monotony. This riffage allows the song to keep this rule of cool style going and allow for a very key element in here, which is transition. A lot of the riffs are deviated from, no, a lot of the riffs are derived from earlier ideas. In fact, usually by the end of one idea, we will hear a small evolution or variation of it as an introduction into the next section. I pointed this out earlier, uh, somewhere during the uh, the middle of the track, the drums came in emphasizing uh, each of the downbeats, giving us a little bit of a four on the floor idea. And this uh, immediately led into a guitar only section that acted as a transition into the full idea, which did emphasize the downbeats with this double eighth note idea. Da -da, da -da, oh, those, are, those are sixteenth notes. Da -da, da -da. You get the initial hit for the downbeat, there's your first emphasis, and then a little bit of a flourish, the 16th note that comes after it. And it gives it a rhythmic syncopation while still emphasizing these downbeat attacks. The drums introduced us to that idea, the guitar picked it up and brought the sound in. It was just a singular guitar doing it, um, giving us the new riff based off of that rhythm the drums gave us, and then the whole band comes in and the sound expands. So we have nice ebb and flow. We also have an idea built from ideas previously. It's a little bit of foreshadowing leading into new ideas, but it's also just really strong evolutionary composition where everything is sort of based off of where we were. Even that idea right there, that da-da, da-da, eventually lend itself into a new idea um, Pitch wise, where we took this, well, actually it was rhythmic too, because we took that and then we syncopated it. The third and fourth groups of 16th notes were shifted just a hair bit behind, was pushed to the offbeat instead of the downbeat, something like that. And then eventually we changed the notes instead of the same note on each of the, uh, oh, sorry, the same pitch on each of those 16th notes, we had moving pitches. And it was just, just this slow evolution. It started from one thing, and then it shifted to one thing, and then another thing, and then another thing. And this is pretty much how the whole song evolves. It's really cool to listen to it. Probably even more so on a second time, as I'm a bit more familiar with where it's going, I can pick up those clues earlier to see how they provide direction on where the song will eventually head. From that perspective, I really love the composition in this track. It's just, it's very cool to hear the song move into drastically new areas, but never really get too far from where it came from. And through that, there's always this thread that I can follow going forward and even going backwards. If I play the song in reverse, I can hear how songs uh, go backwards in this evolution. And I really love that idea of sort of like mutational um, composition, where I think it really is every single idea is based somehow on the, the riff from the last section. And so the entire song ends up being very riff based. Every riff is based off of the one previously, but that's that's it. There's, there's just a lot of riffs. And that's really my only criticism here. It's an instrumental track that feels devoid of something. I bring this up often whenever instrumental tracks don't have melody. I, I, I'm just a sucker for, for melody. <laughs> I like that perfect uh, triad synergy of foundation, including harmony and rhythm, um, melody and ornamentation. I think having those three pieces 
is how you're going to make a great song. And it, they don't have to be in every single section, but generally I like to have things built up like that. And that's not to say that that's the only way to create a song or even to create a good song, but it's certainly one that's going to work for me better. I, I think the one caveat which immediately blows it out and says, oh, obviously this isn't a rule on how to create everything, is atmospherically driven works, which tend not to have melody as well. I don't know what it is about that. I tend to be a bit more receptive to it, but I think it's because of this general idea of narrative. When I listen to an atmospheric work, it takes me on a journey. The atmosphere, by definition, alters my emotions, and I can take those emotional changes and craft a story out of them and become engaged with the music in a storytelling manner in a very similar way that Melody would. I don't really have any connection to this track that way. Many of the sections feel similar to me. I can't really say that there's too much of a flow there. The atmosphere for each one is also fairly similar throughout. And without a melody, I'm just left with a series of, albeit cool, riffs. And so while I do enjoy it moment to moment, I don't really think I took away much from the track other than thinking, yeah, it was, that was a cool little song. Not something I necessarily would come back to, but... I'm glad I heard, and there's, you know, I did enjoy myself. It's not like I hated any moment of it. There just isn't anything here that connects with me, I suppose, on an artistic level. It feels very, uh, what's the word I want? It's an EX word. I can't think of what it is. Exercisal. <laughs> That's not a word. But it feels like an exercise. Make a song with a bunch of riffs in it that are all interconnected. And from that perspective, it, it, it completes the exercise well, but but misses that that little extra bit of of oomph of, of connectivity to, to turn it from an exercise to a work of art. And I don't mean that I don't say that to throw shade at it or to to put it down or anything like that. I'm sure to some people this is a work of art and they really connect with it. I just don't. It it it's missing a component that that allows me to engage with it on any level beyond it was cool. And maybe, you know, that's honestly all it needs to be. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's where I sit with it. I don't have a story going along with it. I don't really engage with it on any level other than, hey, I love the structure of it. I love the way that the ideas move between each other. I want to emulate that in my own music. And like I said, maybe that's good enough. Um, is there anything else I wanted to add to it? I don't think so. There's no lyrics either, so those are my thoughts. And so I watch you from afar's set guitars to kill. Let me know what you thought of this track. If there's anything that stood out to you, anything you'd like to add on to what I said, correct me on, or just give me your own thoughts, perspectives, and opinions on. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. We do have a creator request coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to finish up this week's theme and check out some new music. I don't know what we have in store for tomorrow, actually, <laughs> after the uh, theme video. So it'll be a surprise to all of us, I suppose. <laughs> Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.